Welcome back to Davos, Switzerland. We are in the Congress Center at the World Economic Forum, and we are joined by Cisco's Chief Financial Officer, Kelly Kramer. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So the big theme here at WEF is stakeholder capitalism. So I was hoping you could give our viewers a bit of what you all are doing as it relates to the stakeholders. What are the initiatives for you all going forward? Yeah, no, it's a big part of what we do. I mean, obviously, there's always, as a CFO, we have the financial returns to the shareholders, but we care as much about the stakeholders. So that entails everything that we do with CFO. ESR. We actually have done for the last three years uh, a webcast to our investors on ESG, which has been good. And we go through what we've been doing in terms of cutting greenhouse gases. But also, you know, it's been very important for Chuck, our CEO, to invest in the homelessness issue that we have in Silicon Valley. So we've invested $50 million for Destination Home to try to improve that. So we try to cover the whole thing from our people to our society to our planet. I want to say, Kelly, it's good to see you in person. It you usually is. come on in a remote box, so it's very good to see you. Uh, <laughs> as the chief financial officer of Cisco, some of these initiatives, how do they impact the bottom line? Well, it's just, it's good business, right? I mean, again, it, from an employee perspective, our employees really engage and it drives the engagement. You know, if we keep our employees, because it's very competitive to keep talent in Silicon Valley, you know, it, for investors, it's more and more important. So mm -hmm. the fact that we are ranked in uh, number two in Barron's Most Sustainable Companies uh, this past year and number one the year before, that really helps drive that engagement with both our ESG investors as well as the employees. And again, all of that just drives the flywheel, you know, with the business. On, on the sustainability front, BlackRock, I believe, is your second largest shareholder. Yep. What are those conversations like right Right now with a company like BlackRock that is coming out in front of a lot of these issues. Well, I think, again, we're all for it because we've been doing this for so long. I mean, this has been a huge part of our, our company. We've been doing our CSR reporting forever, and we, you know, we lead in, in all things. Just yesterday, in Corporate Nights, we were ranked number four globally in terms of CSR so and ESG. So it's great for us. I'm happy to see, you know, holding other companies accountable to that. Yeah. I got to ask you this because I talk to a lot of CEOs, and it often comes up is how do you, you know, maintain for the long term sometimes when there's these short-term expectations from Wall Street, especially the analysts. Well, Kelly yes. loves earnings how calls. Do you, exactly. How do you manage that? And, and how do you think that those expectations should be managed going forward? It seems like we're at a paradigm shift. Well, you know, I think what we try to do is we try to be totally transparent with our investors. You know, most of our investors are very long-term investors. You know, we do have the rhythm of Wall Street, but, you know, which is fine. We like to explain what we're doing. And, you know, if we are making long-term investments, I will tell them that's what we're doing. And, you know, it kind of helps them understand where we're going. They, too, want us to be investing for the long term. So, you know, it works out pretty well. Uh, on the economic front, can you give us reads uh, on how the U.S. economy is doing? There are a lot of mixed messages floating around, but also the emerging markets. Have, have those markets bottomed for Cisco yet? Well, it's tough to say. You know, if I go back to our last earnings we just did, we certainly felt the impact of both the uncertainty around the trade world and emerging markets for us has been very, very slow and declining for the last couple quarters. I'm optimistic that now that we've got phase one of China done, hopefully that makes things a little better and we'll start to see that come around. But for our business, whenever there's any uncertainty you know, it's an easy kind of purchase to postpone. So on the good side, you know, our pipeline was very full. It was just taking us longer to close deals. Our deal sizes were slightly smaller. Hopefully now that, you know, Brexit, Brexit is kind of behind us and we've got the phase one and phase two hopefully soon, that should help. How does it work? When you when that trade deal got signed, do you see an influx of orders? Does it happen that quickly? It does not. It does not. And, and quite frankly, uh, China for us is, is a relatively a small number at this point for us. Um, but again, it's very important for us. So uh, uh, again, it's just the for all the enterprises, all the multinational companies, for them, the losing uncertainty helps a lot. Right. Well, I'm sensing a bit of more optimism from you. And earlier this week, we had a survey from PwC of CEOs, and it was record levels of pessimism. But do you think, obviously, it's, it seems that that has changed. What are the things that are going to be on your radar going forward? I get it. It does come down to, I think there is a lot of mixed messages out there. It's tough because you see record numbers of, of, you know, like Wall Street, but then you see the uncertainty on some of the metrics. I think the more that these big overhangs are taken care of, like trade, I do think there'll be a lot of momentum out there. So I think that helps. What grade would you put on right now the CapEx spending environment in the U.S.? It, it wasn't good last no, it year. it was not. Has it loosened up? What's the outlook for 2020? Yeah, well, if I go back, you know, it has been slow and it was slow last quarter. We'll see. Again, I think it's all related to how the momentum feels. I do think it's way more optimistic this year than it was even last year at this time. So uh, we'll see what happens. I got to ask you about your experience at the World Economic Forum. There's a lot of meetings, a lot of sessions, a lot of conversations. What are some of the key takeaways for you from this annual meeting? Oh, it's, it's always great to be here, not just only for the sessions that we have here on a lot of the key topics, but being able to make the connections with, you know, whether it's world leaders for countries that we may not make during the year or, or just other companies. So it's great to get a lot of meetings done in a very short period of time, but really be able to have a big impact in one week. Uh, I go back to the, the John Chambers days as CEO <laughs> at Cisco. I follow the story very closely. 
oh, he always talked about smart cities. Mm -hmm. Why don't we see more smart cities? Well, that's a, actually it's a very big initiative for us. We actually have done 50 smart cities in India alone, actually. And then I met with the president of Azerbaijan on Monday. We're also doing a smart city there. So again, it is it is ramping everywhere globally, and it's a huge, you know, it's great for the the, the countries and the cities because they can automate and and. and help their public sector, but it's just good business. Where is the U.S. in this? Hey, we've got smart cities in the U.S. as well. There's lots of pockets everywhere. I think you'll learn more Bring about it. Bring it to Long Island, New York. That's where yeah, I Yeah, no kidding. Right, I hear you. <laughs> well, Kelly Kramer, CFO of Cisco, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.